All right, before we get into talking about the parasitic worms, we're going to do a little review. Uh, just to check your knowledge here. Which of the following characteristics is typical of a eukaryotic cell, but would not be found in a prokaryotic cell? Is it A, ribosomes, B, a cell membrane, C, the Golgi body, or D, the cell wall? Go ahead and pause the video and think about that one. Okay, hopefully you got this one. The Golgi is only found in eukaryotes, not prokaryotes, because it was, is one of our organelles. Uh, to be a cell, it has to have a cell membrane, so all cells have these. All cells have ribosomes, which make proteins, and many prokaryotes have a cell wall. Many eukaryotes don't have a cell wall. Fungi and plants do, animals don't. Um, so hopefully you got that one. All right, this chapter, uh, if you are squeamish, this one may give you the heebie-jeebies because uh, this is all about invertebrate parasites, including helminths, which are parasitic worms, and arthropods, which are include insects and arachnids. Um, so, disclaimer, these are truly not microbes. They are not microscopic. Uh, for historical reasons and... Uh, other reasons they are included in microbiology, worms have microscopic egg stages that uh, microbiology is used for, and arthropods are common vectors for many microbial pathogens, so they can transmit them from individual to individual. We are going to start with the helminths, the parasitic worms. Helminth is another word for a parasitic worm. We have three basic groups. We have the nematodes. These are roundworms, which are cylindrical. Um, these are basically a long digestive tube that ends in an anus. Uh, the flukes are flatworms, the trematodes. Um, they're kind of oval-shaped. Um, again, uh, they have a digestive tube, but this ends in a cecum, uh, no outlet. Um, they're hermaphroditic. Uh, we're not going to talk about these ones too much, uh, but we did look at one in lab two. You probably saw the big liver fluke in there. Ugh. Cestodes are tapeworms. Uh, these are parasitic flatworms um, that absorb nutrients through their skin. They often create a head sucker with a nasty uh, grabber structure and a long tail of segments, and they contain male and female reproductive structures. So let's do a case study here. We have Dottie. She's two years old, and she's the daughter of a petroleum executive. Uh, the family includes four children, three dogs, and she likes to play outside with the other children uh, and animals. Um, they're on a ranch, and she develops the habit of scratching her bottom. The nanny tries to discourage this, but how can you keep a kid from doing this, right? Um, within a month, her mother notices that uh, other members of the family also have a itch down there and they go well it's a hot humid summer maybe it's just you know sweaty or something like that uh, but one evening uh, the mother is changing the daughter's diaper notices white thread-like worms in her feces they're several millimeters long they go to the pediatrician and uh, they suspect pinworms so here's a fun one to test for pinworm infection, you do something called the tape test. This is literally taking a piece of scotch tape and you have to press it against the anus and then you put it on a microscope slide and look for the eggs there. So that is the tape test. It is relatively low tech, but it gets the job done. They see the eggs on the slide, so they confirm that it is pinworm. So the physician prescribes mebendazole, um, which is a microtubule inhibitor, which prevents growth of the cell. Um, and the entire family gets it because they suspect that uh, everyone is infected uh, because uh, changing the baby's diaper, people probably are not great about washing their hands thoroughly, so it can be transmitted to everyone, particularly if the nanny and the maid um, are also serving dinner, uh, that it can be spread through everyone. And the mom asks about the dogs, and she's told dogs don't carry pinworms, but dogs can carry other worms that are transmissible to humans. So uh, 
again, another another thing to creep you out. The drug only works on the mature worms. It doesn't work on eggs. So they have to be treated. They have to take the treatment for a short period of time. Then two weeks later, they have to take the treatment again to attack the um, ones that have grown up to maturity now. And they have to continue this every few weeks until about six months later, they are finally able to eliminate this infection from the household. So the worms uh, get transmitted fecal oral. Um, they are uh, small worms, about three to 10 millimeters long. Uh, they get into the human body and by ingesting the eggs, the eggs make their way to the small intestines where they hatch um, and grow. And the female worms migrate towards the anus where they release their eggs and they sit on the exterior there and cause itchiness. And uh, then people scratch and itch and then they might not wash their hands. And then the cycle continues or they transmit them to other individuals. These worms live in the intestines and steal nutrients from the host, a common thing for worms to do. Um, large majorities of the population may be infected with pinworms worldwide. This is something that is very difficult to eliminate. Tapeworms are another form of worm. Uh, they are the cestodes. Their larvae are transmitted uh, in undercooked meat. So when you eat undercooked meat, you ingest the larva and they generally make their way to the intestines uh, where they will attach with these nasty, scary looking uh, spikes and suckers. Um, and then below the head, there's a bunch of segments that just keep growing longer and longer. There's different species that are found in different animals, pork, beef, and fish all have unique species. Um, these can grow very long, 2 to 15 meters in length. That's over 30 feet. Um, that is, yeah, that's long. Um, and they just keep building body segments. They live in the intestines and, again, uh, extract nutrients from the host. Um, interesting side note, in the olden days, uh, tapeworms were uh, used as a weight loss treatment because you tend to lose a lot of weight because the tapeworm grows and it starts stealing your nutrients from you. So that led to weight loss. Uh, there are some bad side effects of that. One, you have a giant worm growing in you and two, it can lead to some other complications. So that is no longer a common uh, treatment for um, lo weight loss, but it was used historically. The general life cycle, uh, you'll have something like a tapeworm growing in the muscular tissue of an animal like this cow, uh, and it forms a cyst um, that someone eats undercooked uh, meat, and those cysts are then ingested. They develop into these uh, worm structures with these hooks on them and suckers that can attach to the intestinal wall. Um, and then they start to grow. The adult tapeworms uh, will develop eggs in the proglottid region of the worm, and they can spread those eggs. Um, they will get uh, pooed out through uh, the, the anus, and then uh, animals might ingest those, completing the cycle. Here's a relatively small tapeworm. Um, this is uh, not a microscope slide. This is an actual photograph. So uh, this is a short one, though. They can get much longer. So uh, I don't like worms. Uh, they're, they're pretty gross, but um, they are a problem that we continue to deal with, and they're difficult to treat. The other group that we're going to talk about in this chapter are the arthropods. Arthropods are invertebrates that have an exoskeleton and jointed appendages. We have things like ticks in here, um, mosquitoes, flies, things like that, beetles, uh, spiders. Um, they uh, include groups of uh, things like mites as well. So there's, there's two things going on here. We have some that... Uh, feed on humans for blood meals or inject eggs into hosts. These can be um, vectors of other microbial diseases. So they are the transmitters of these diseases, like we saw with the mosquito with plasmodium in malaria. They can also just be what we call ectoparasites, things that live on the outside of us and are annoying. Things like uh, lice, 
are an example of ectoparasites um, that don't spread diseases but are just annoyances. So we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of them. Ticks are a big one, particularly if you like to go outdoors. These are common arthropod vectors in our area. Um, they can spread things like Lyme disease and other tick-borne diseases. Um, Lyme disease is caused by the bacteria Borrelia burgdorferi, which is uh, the vector for it is a tick. When the tick is feeding, some of the bacteria gets injected into the human. Uh, ticks will feed on deer and things like that and get the bacteria and then transmit it to humans. Uh, Lyme disease, the first symptom uh, and sign is this big bullseye-shaped rash. There are other tick-borne uh, illnesses as well. Like I said, we have insects with six legs, um, lice, and other wingless ectoparasites. These don't transmit disease, uh, but they can be annoyances. If you are interested in vector-borne diseases, um, there are a whole courses on this. Um, if you're really interested in this parasite chapter and uh, along with it vector-borne disease, there's a great podcast called This Week in Parasitism. If you're a nerd like me, it is awesome. It is very uh, scientific, but it goes into great detail about these things and uh, you can learn a lot about these parasitic diseases and the arthropods that can be their vectors. All right, that is it for chapter 11. A lot of diversity in there. So uh, we will continue on in chapter 12 with viruses.